I can't even tell you how many times we hear people saying, well, what grip should I be in for my two-handed backhand? Or what grip is best? Eastern, semi-Western, full Western? Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Uh, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of grips. In this video, we're gonna show you what each grip is, how to position your hand on the racket, and the pros and cons of each grip. The first grip that we're gonna talk about is called the Continental Grip and is the grip that you'll use for the most amounts of shots. Uh, anywhere from the backhand to volleys to overheads to serves. And this is a grip that you should become very comfortable with. And it's really easy to find. What you're gonna do is you're gonna identify the correct bevel. Now, what the bevel is, they are the flat sections on your grip. So if you count them, starting with the racket on edge, the top bevel is number one, the first bevel to the right is number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around the grip. Obviously it's the opposite way for left-handed players, just going counterclockwise. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by placing your index knuckle right here and the pad of your hand along bevel number two. So I'm gonna take my racket on edge, start with bevel number one, go one bevel to my right, place my index knuckle and the pad on my, of my hand on the grip. It is very similar to what people say a shaking hands grip. Uh, typically you won't find this done for forehands. They used to do it a lot back in the day when the game was a lot slower, the balls didn't bounce as high, where you didn't need such an extreme grip to get up here. Uh, you could see players uh, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s still using continental grips for their forehands. But now the game has changed and you don't find too many continental grip forehand players. So, in review, this is a great grip for serves, volleys, and your backhand. Up next, we're gonna talk a little bit about how, which grip to use for the forehand. When it comes to hitting forehands, we wanna make something really clear. You have options. You can hit a forehand with any grip, but I'm gonna tell you about what your best options are today. Now, we're gonna talk about an Eastern grip to start. You'd be in good company with this Eastern grip because Roger Federer is somebody who uses this grip. It's a really neutral grip, and all you're gonna do is place your index knuckle on the third bevel. So again, one, two, three. That's gonna be in line with the strings of your racket. So we're right here. And this grip allows you to hit topspin, but also to be able to drive the ball. Um, this is a great grip for hitting up your forehand. Excellent option. Now, if you want a little bit more spin, you can move to the grip that Novak Djokovic prefers, which is the semi-western. Now that's a four on your, on your grip. All you're gonna do is slide this knuckle down and to the right for righties. So now our knuckles facing a little bit farther down at the ground. And for this, it's going to allow us the ability to turn our racket over a little bit, presenting the racket in a way that we can vertically swing a little bit easier, creating topspin in a little bit easier manner. Now, finally, I want to give you this option. Do I want you to take it? Not really, but you have the option of using this extreme Western grip. Now the extreme Western is going to be one, two, three, four, five. Now this is where your knuckle is going to be at the very bottom of your racket on plane with the skinny side of your racket. You can tell somebody's using a Western grip, just like my buddy Jack Sock, if you are looking at them in front of their forehand and you can see their knuckles staring right at you. Now this is a Western grip. The downside of the Western grip is it makes it more difficult to drive the ball. So lots and lots of heavy spin, but it's a very difficult grip to adjust to. Um, instead, for amateur level players, we recommend that Eastern or the semi-Western. Now Ian's gonna tell you all about what grips you should use for your backhand. 
Now that Ira and Kirby have covered the continental grip and variations of uh, different forehand grips, let's talk about the backhand grip. And we'll cover one-handed backhand and two-handed backhand quickly. Let's start off with one-handed backhand. On a one-handed backhand for a righty, the big knuckle should be up on the very top bevel, which is bevel number one. And there's some variation here. As you watch professional players, some players have their knuckles straight across, which means that the heel pan uh, is either on number one or maybe even close to number eight over on the other side. And this is important because the knuckles get placed straight across in alignment with the grip. And this helps release the racket a little bit more for a one-handed backhand player, hit a little bit more aggressive topspin. Players that are close to straight across include uh, Gasquet is pretty close to straight across, uh, Robredo is close to straight across. Some players will be a little bit more spread, meaning here's the angle of the grip, here's the angle of my knuckles. Uh, Federer is actually a little bit more spread. He, his knuckles are not uh, straight across. So you'll see some variation here. There's pros and cons to each. There's really not a right or a wrong way. I would say the only thing that you really want to avoid is trying to hit with close to a continental grip, which makes it difficult to get under the ball and create topspin and release the racket head. This is a mis mistake that I made in the past and really limited me in my ability to create to topspin. So your big knuckle really should be up towards the top and your, your knuckles should be somewhat close to straight across the handle. A little bit of angle is fine, but not much. So for you lefties out there, it's big knuckle all the way up on the top and either a little bit of spread in the knuckles or closer to, to straight across. Now for a two-handed backhand, We've got two different grips. Your dominant hand, your bottom hand, should be something close to continental, which I already told you how to find that. Your top hand, your, your off hand, your non-dominant hand, should be either eastern forehand with your left hand, your, your non-dominant hand, or semi-western. There's a little bit of variation here, but not much among professional players. Occasionally you'll see close to a semi-Western, but you'll, you'll never see anybody farther, farther than that with the top hand. Uh, usually players are Eastern or somewhere close to semi-Western. And on the dominant hand, you'll see continental or occasionally turned up a little bit towards the top, but with the knuckles still spread across. You really don't see, you, you're not gonna see anything close to one-handed backhand. Uh, it's something close to, continental or turned a little bit up towards the top with, uh, with the dominant hand. So this just simply allows both hands to work together smoothly and allow energy to flow from one hand to the other. Uh, lefty, same thing, continental or close to continental with the bottom hand, and then either eastern or something close to semi-western with the, with the top hand. So those are your backhand grips. Hope this video was super helpful and uh, lets you know exactly what is good for which strokes and, and when and what types of players use these different grips. If you'd like a plan to follow the next time you're on the courts so that your practice time is more focused, has more purpose, and you just get more value out of every repetition on the courts, then go to tennispracticeplan.com or you can click the link in the description down below. It'll take you right to it. Just let us know where to send your action plan. We'll send it right to you. And the very next time you go out onto the courts, your practice time will be more focused, higher quality. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like. Leave any comments or questions that you have down below. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you next time.